Hello, everyone. Good to see you. I recognize everyone, even as you walked in with only about 25% facial recognition. So uh, thank you. Strange times, but, um, and yet good times. Uh, welcome to our middle school, high school, preschool, pre-K orientation tonight. Glad you're here. We also may have some friends joining us live stream. And so welcome to you as well. Um, our plan tonight is to spend a little bit of time in here and talk about a few things. And then uh, rather than going over into the school building, our teachers and faculty in the middle school and high school are, are set up out here in the narthex. Um, preschool pre-K, we are going to have you go over into the uh, school building, the education building. So that is what we'll do. And we'll explain a little bit more about that at that time. So this school year is the 50th school year at Faith Lutheran School. Isn't that something? Yeah. Uh, if you could imagine what this school would look like as a person, you can look at me, because I turned 50 this year. So, <laughs> and uh, I don't know if the school's beard would be quite this white. Um, it is a well-weathered school, and the Lord has blessed us here at Faith Lutheran School. 1971 uh, is the year that the preschool began. Now, the grade school didn't come along until the early 80s. But nevertheless, we're counting this year as the 50th continuous year of operation of Faith Lutheran School in Plano. And, believe it or not, the school started over here. So you're, you're walking in history a little bit by simply meeting here. The preschool was started here in this area. And I believe that these wings, uh, we see them as part of our sanctuary now, but these two middle pews were the main part of the sanctuary. And then these were Sunday school rooms, preschool rooms, and the narthex also. Um, and then the preschool was moved over into the school building once that, was, uh, that project began. And the upstairs was left unfinished for some time. And then we finally moved into the upstairs and um, the rest is, is history. Now we utilize the entire campus, both buildings. The uh, school theme each year, we have a, a scripture verse that is our theme. And the faculty chose Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. That is our theme verse for this year. And we'll spend some time with the students talking about that and a little bit of introduction uh, tonight. Last year, our theme was from John chapter 16. Um, in the world there will be tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And last year, uh, especially after spring break, we were talking about the kinds of tribulation that we have known in this uh, pandemic and the COVID-19 and all of these things that have become almost the new normal for us. This year, um, still entertaining the consequences of that as we begin this school year. But nevertheless, focusing on faith and trust, trust in the Lord. And this is a, a good theme for anyone, any time, uh, any, any good days, bad days. The word trust is a word that is a word that means uh, faith, believe, cling to. Cling to whom? The Lord. And who is the Lord? Well, the Lord is the Lord God. 
He is the one that we know as one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose very uh, enfleshment in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, we know personally, the one who lived for us and died for us and rose for us and lives today for us, that Lord. And trust in the Lord, trust in what he says, trust in his promises. The Lord never ever promised that there would be no pandemic. Um, world history suggests otherwise. There have been all kinds of problems in the world and this will go in the history books. Uh, the children today will have children and, and there will be uh, history projects that say, uh, so what was the COVID-19 thing about? You know, it's in our book and what happened for you? What was it like? <laughs> and all the things you're experiencing now, uh, you will be able to, to tell your children or, or for those of you that may have grandchildren by then. Uh, so at any rate, uh, in the midst of this time, I hope it is said of us who know Jesus Christ, who believe in Jesus Christ, that we put our trust in him. That means that we put our trust in him in the midst of good days and bad days. There's absolutely no promise that uh, every day, every one of the 177 school days that we will know beginning the 12th of August is going to go absolutely perfectly. Um, nor that all of our best mitigation protocols uh, will absolutely prevent all kinds of things. We hope that it will do what we're trying uh, and hoping that it will do, mitigate, um, to be smart and to be safe. Um, nevertheless, even in the midst of a tough time, we put our trust in the Lord. I think, uh, at least I'll refer to myself, my own sinful inclination is to put my trust in myself or my own resources or my own power, my own knowledge, my own, uh, maybe my, my friendship group uh, or my family. And don't get me wrong, I think the Lord provides those things as a very, very good and helpful thing for us. But I think the key here is that those things never ever trump the word of God. They never trump Jesus Christ, especially when they are in conflict with one another and uh, one wants to pull this way and another wants to pull that way. Then we have to ask ourselves, will we trust in the Lord with all our heart and not lean on our own understanding? Or will we rather not trust in the Lord and lean on our own understanding? There, I think it's especially helpful when the community of faith comes together and we build one another up and we say, hey, remember, <laughs> trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord. Even in the midst of this problem or that problem, this good day or that bad day, the Lord will be with you. The Lord will be with you. And so with that theme, um, we begin our school year, the 50th school year, the 2020-2021 school year. If I could uh, invite you then to join me in a word of prayer, we'll have an opening prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that your grace is abundant for us. We thank you that your mercies are new to us every morning. We thank you that your faithfulness is very, very great. We pray that as we struggle with the inclination to put our trust in ourselves rather than you, that you would help us, encourage us, and lead us to put our trust in the Lord, that is to put our trust in you, we pray that when we face good days or even adversity, that you especially then would give to us a bolster of our Christian faith. That we might hear the word of God, that we might receive Christian counsel from friends. We might be encouraged to put our trust in you, knowing that you love us, that you have loved us all the way to the cross, that you 
wish that um, we remain in this faith that you promise to deliver us from this valley of sorrow, this veil of tears unto yourself in heaven. We pray that we might remain confident in that faith throughout this school year and even more throughout our lives. Be with us tonight as we have our middle school, high school, preschool, pre-K orientation meeting. These things we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So, like you, I have uh, someone sent this. I just received this today. Uh, face mask. And uh, it's a, uh, out of the, I don't know who sent this to me. Um, but uh, this is what uh, Pastor Keezer looks like in a, in a face mask. My ears come forward a little bit. And uh, the white beard kind of comes through, but it matches the white, the little bitty inscribed white cross down here. And so throughout the school day, especially when I'm in the hallways and um, outside of my office and unable to socially distance, um, you probably are going to see me in, in this face mask uh, or face covering. So uh, you, get, you get a glimpse today. And some of our teachers also uh, are wearing them. We have uh, Miss uh, Mildred uh, uh, wearing the, the see-through one. So that looks really nice. And I don't know. Maybe we'll have fun with these. Maybe we won't. I don't know. But um, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight in our orientation. But since I am doing my best to maintain social distancing up here, I'm going to take it off so that way I can continue to talk to you and get through our presentation tonight. If my computer will, uh, if it went to sleep. One of the things that want to make you aware of is that as a lot of information is coming out about this coming school year, that we are trying to find a centralized location for you to reference it rather than constantly trying to dig through old emails. And one of the places that we have uh, been putting some information is on our website. So uh, everyone should be familiar with the Faith Plano, the www fLSplano.org website. And there we have entitled the um, section for you to, to help bring to your attention some of the things that we have been working on. It's called Safe Learning. Safe Learning. Safe Learning 2020, 2021. And if you've been to the website, I've tried to link it in the last Headmasters update so that uh, you can, it's in the scrolling uh, opening, on the opening page, there's a scrolling, the first thing you'll see is Safe Learning 2020, 2021. And we have quite a few of the things that, um, well, every, almost everything I think that's been in the emails uh, uh, has been uploaded to this site. And I think Amy Crawford, thank you Amy for uh, putting that stuff up there for us and keeping our website up to date. What I want to do tonight is that you have access to this, so I just want to walk through some of those these things as best I can and uh, talk with you about this. You've seen the emails. I've had a lot of face-to-face uh, -face meetings with faculty members and other volunteer committee members over this entire summer. Uh, the number of people that have given uh, all kinds of time, volunteer service, to helping us come together this school year is just phenomenal. Um, it's uh, encouraging for me to see, see so many people working together and trying to brainstorm and, and resolve uh, potential problems. One of the blessings that happened just in the last um, uh, week or so, last 10 days, was our Attorney General, uh, Attorney General Paxton, uh, gave permission and encouraged that if schools wish to start in person, they may. And so we were very encouraged by that. You saw that on the same day that our local uh, Plano Independent School District decided to go remote only, uh, we, had, um, we had news that we were going to also gather in person. Um, 
I do not stand in judgment uh, at all with the Plano Independent School District or those that, that choose not to open because I can tell you that the amount of work required to try to meet in person is a lot. And we have a, a smaller group, um, not that it's totally easy, but I, I can't imagine trying to uh, do this <laughs> in multiple campuses um, with multiple faculty and staff and administrators. Um, and so we have been blessed that we are who we are. Uh, in this case, size matters and is in our favor. And uh, we think that um, we have a good chance of opening safely for in person on the 12th of August. At the same time, we have been flexible enough to work through remote options and even a hybrid in person and remote. Uh, many of those things um, hope go very smoothly. Um, one thing I'm guessing will probably happen, especially with the remote and those that are new to remote and those that are uh, new to the hybrid, is that there will be some hiccups. And what I mean by hiccups, there'll be some things that, that uh, as you begin, begin that experience, you maybe uh, hope that it would have been much better or different or there's frustrations in logging on. Um, those things are going to happen. So if you are a remote learner and if, if you um, are experiencing some, some snags, some hiccups, that's okay. You're, you're right in with everybody else, okay? <laughs> those things are probably going to happen. Um, we'll do our best to work through those, but um, uh, we are trying to be flexible and we, we hope that you will also share that flexibility with us as we try to navigate putting a lot more students on, uh, on Easy Talks, uh, especially in, in grades six through, six through 12, but also having um, the, the right e equipment and making sure you're ready at, at home. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that tonight. Um, after I do that, after I talk about a few things here, some highlights of the, the plan, so to speak, um, you know, the faculty will be available uh, to visit with you. We'll also dismiss uh, pre-K and preschool. So, the um, August the 1st, we were trying to get everybody by August the 1st to designate whether they were going to be in person whether they were going to be remote only or whether they, were, they wanted to do a little bit of both. Um, if you, um, uh, I think we've, we've gotten almost everybody in, but if for some reason you're one of those that, that you're hearing about the August 1st deadline for the first time tonight, uh, see the school office, okay, and make sure that we know where you're going to be. Um, for those that are in person, we need to make sure that we have desks and chairs or those that are going to be hybrid, that we have desks and chairs ready to go, um, that we have planned for social distancing, classroom size, and those kinds of things. So it's really important for us to know and to be prepared for you to come on campus, whether it's hybrid or in person. Remote learners in grades six through 12 will also uh, need to make sure that they understand and how to log on and the, the, have the information to join as a remote learner. One idea we're talking about is just sharing remote learning with just about with everybody or having access to that in case for some reason, I mean, technically, if uh, you're sick or something else keeps you away from school that day, it might be possible for you to join remotely. And so we, we, want, to, we want everyone to be aware of how to join uh, remotely. So August 1 was, the, was uh, our target date. I think we have 100% or 99.9% .9 of the people of you have already designated uh, your choice. Uh, one question I've been getting is, well, what if we, what if we want to change? Well, um, we hope to be flexible enough. We think we are flexible enough that that's possible. Um, we haven't put anything necessarily in writing, but I'll just kind of tell you what we're thinking um, it's easier for us to be flexible in you being remote than it is for you being in person. 
especially if you were remote only. If you're hybrid, you're gonna be on campus a couple days a week, one day a week, up to four days a week. Uh, five days a week, you'd be all in person. But, um, so you'll have a chair and you'll have a desk and we'll know where you're gonna be on the in-person days. But um, if you are all remote and you decide to start coming on occasion, we'll have to make sure that we have a desk for you and that we have considered that. And we'll need some, uh, perhaps some lead time. Um, so one of the things we're, we're kind of kicking around, we'll throw out here, if, if you start thinking that direction, right now I'm going to say, if you could give us about a week's notice, that would be enough time to make sure we have in place what we need, what, what we need to have in place. And that is if you are remote only or in person. We can be very flexible in going uh, remote. Uh, so if you're gonna stay home, that's, you know, maybe you need to give mom and dad a week's notice or maybe <laughs> a month's notice. Uh, <laughs> so you understand what it's like if you're gonna be home, what sort of planning needs to go in uh, to being home. We need to have that kind of lead time for planning here at, at school. Um, so I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to share just that parent choice and those, uh, those basic options. Okay. Um, home health awareness and screenings. This year, more than ever, it is very important that families are aware of their children's health. And uh, whether that means that you're you know, to what degree you want to be aware of that. We're not dictating what you do at home. Uh, but we are saying that if someone shows up on campus and is exhibiting signs of COVID-19, that um, our policy says that that child will have to be isolated and that that child will, will not be able to remain in school. And so rather than have us find out if you are being aware of your own children's health, um, maybe even your own health, you know how it goes in your house, or maybe it's your goes in your house like it is in mine. Someone's not feeling so well, and then maybe someone else isn't feeling so well, and you can kind of you kind of keep an eye on those things. Um, we the last thing Faith Plano wants, the last thing you want, is what people call a COVID-19 outbreak on our campus. We don't want that. We, we don't want it because we care about you and we love you. Uh, I don't want that for me. <laughs> I don't want that. My children, I'm a dad also. And uh, this year, my wife will be joining us on faculty. So we have a lot of, lot of uh, uh, just, I have a lot of personal interest in this as well. And so we will be doing that as a family. We're asking you to do that as a family, uh, that you do uh, that you are aware of your own health at, at home. We will be sending home reminders and news and notes saying, hey, you know, keep, you know, keep an eye on these kinds of symptoms, so forth and so on, so that you're aware of things that may, uh, may be leading or could be signs of COVID-19. And I know some of these are very difficult, for instance, a cough. Um, I don't know about you, but almost since ever I moved back to Texas in 2014, and in the fall, I can't help but start wheezing. I, I, I think I've developed late 40s, now 50-year-old, um, uh, just, just breathing this good old Texas air <laughs> near the Dallas Metroplex, and I don't think eating all the honey in my backyard and pollen I can scrape together is going to help me because I, I think it's more environmental than that, than it is just simply uh, natural pollen. And, and so we want to be smart about those things too, but I'm told by, we have two, um, one of the great blessings that our school has is we have two family, uh, we have two uh, physicians who are sending their children to our school. And we have been talking with them. Uh, Ruth Bo, I don't. She may be joining us online, or she may be here on the other night, another night. But and also Grace Phipps. These are two wonderful, wonderful women who have donated uh, their advice and expertise to helping us out with our plan this year. And so I thank God for them. But 
they, they're also willing to help advise and counsel us uh, on these symptoms. I'm not a doctor. I'm not. Uh, none of our faculty members are. We're, we're simply lay people who are trying to determine whether or not the presented symptoms might be those kinds of present symptoms that are presenting themselves as potential uh, uh, presumptive COVID-19. And uh, uh, they have offered their services in helping us in that screening, but that may not always be possible in every case. Uh, I can tell you that running a fever at school is, is pretty much an automatic. If you spike a fever at school, we, we're not gonna say you have COVID-19, but that certainly is pr presumptive enough. Um, and, and so we, we want you to be aware of what's going on at home. And uh, if you wanna take your own children's temperatures at home, you certainly may. Uh, we won't be requiring that. We will be taking temperatures on the way in before you come into the school building. Uh, we didn't take temperatures coming into the sanctuary. Uh, the church has not established that for this building, but all children will come through the school building. Um, we can't have anybody coming directly into the sanctuary. Everyone will have to go through the school building and before entering, we'll have to have a temperature check. So that will be pretty much the extent of our screening each day is that, that temperature check. Um, so, um, one of the things to remember is that as you are dropping off your children in the mornings, you get into the habit of just waiting for that. We do have some uh, temperature, uh, what, do you, what do you call them, Tem temper thermometers, checkers, and you, you point it at the forehead and squeeze a little uh, button and it, it takes the temperature on the way in. Um, I have been taking my temperature every day that I've been here since March the 23rd. I've learned that I'm a 97.6 kind of guy. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, I like to say that uh, maybe I'm training to be a, a great athlete because I know athletes are always into their, you know, their blood pressure, their temperature, their heart rate and things like that. But it's become a new norm for me. And if you haven't been doing that, I think the children will get used to, to getting the temperature check. That includes any adult that, that would come in. We're really trying to limit visitors uh, into the school building. And I think you understand why, and I, I think you'll be willing to help out. We're gonna have to see how this goes this year. If we have 177 days uh, with no, no illness, God be praised, but we'll also have a lot greater confidence uh, in in this disease within our camp, within our campus. But uh, if someone uh, does have uh, COVID-19, then, um, you know, and, and, and we're not careful and that begins to spread, then, then we'll have another issue on our hands. And that's exactly what we're trying to prevent. Exactly what we're trying to prevent. So, um, any questions about anything I've said so far? I'll be getting to a few other things, but I'll Stop. Any any basic questions? Yes, ma'am. Right now, our policy says three days. Um, there are new considerations based on new guidelines that we're hearing not only from the CDC and also recommendations from Dr. Bo and Dr. Phipps. That may, be, that may go back to the old 24-hour rule. Um, but right now, the current policy, as it has been distributed, is, is three days. Um, so the, uh, for, for, for a, a fever. Um, if that fever then is presumed COVID-19, which almost every one of them are, then um, it, yes, it is 10 days. And three of those days right now have to be uh, since your fever has passed without medication. So that may have been a roundabout way of answering your question, but I think I mean to say, yes, it is presumptive COVID-19 and it is three days once your fever is passed. So if on day nine, you still have a fever, then you, you, keep, you, you stay home until your fever is passed.
They, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you may continue school remotely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, if your allergies are presenting themselves as COVID-19, yes. If you're concerned, you know, you can, you can dial a medic now and do all kinds of things. And um, if you're concerned, um, I know my, our health care, you can, you can dial a medic. And uh, with my health care plan, I don't know what yours is like, but I, um, they're, they're, uh, for a time they're offering, I don't even know if they're going to charge us an office visit if we use the, the dial a doc. So uh, there's other resources besides the school only that I would encourage you to lean on. What's that? There was no fever, only cough. That's still a presumption of COVID. Yeah, the way I've talked to, to Dr. Bo in, in particular about this, and I, I think Dr. Phipps would agree, um, while there are, while there are these, these, this isolated list, um, the medical professional calls it presenting flu-like symptoms. And um, they are better at screening uh, coughs than I am. To me, a, to me, if you're coughing, you're coughing. I don't know if you're coughing because, you know, you have flu-like symptoms or whether you're coughing because of, of allergies. And, and so, you know, a, a medical professional is able to, to help us out. So in that case, you know, uh, we're, we're going to try to lean on some uh, medical profession there. And uh, I haven't talked to Dr. Phipps. I don't know if she's listening or not, but Dr. Bowe, was said that she would even be available uh, at times. And uh, we, I don't know if we'll be able to get her all the time, but even to help us, we have a, a suspicion, but we don't know. So these are one of these areas where I'm as nervous about it as you are, because I'm not a doctor, and yet we'll, we'll want to try to navigate those waters. And, um, uh, you, you know, and, and see how it goes. But our goal, uh, our goal is to remain in person. Our goal is to remain healthy, and our goal is to make sure that someone who is truly presenting COVID-19 symptoms gets the care and attention that they need. We're, we're not trying to keep healthy people out of school. Who's trying to do that? Um, but because we don't know, uh, sometimes we may be erring on the side of caution. Yeah. Yes. Right. Well, um, if you are able to join us via Easy Talks, especially in grades six through twelve, um, yes, that that would be the best way to go to join us via Easy Talk. If you're not feeling well, so that's the that's the joy of this option is that if you are feeling a little uh, a little lousy that day, um, normally you're an in person person, <laughs> but you can you can uh, you can join via Easy Talks that day, just just. To, you could err on the safe of the side of safety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, if if you read uh, if you go to the the COVID nineteen response plan, yeah, there is a, there is um, that that situation is is dealt with. Yeah, which includes. Uh, self-exclusion if you have been directly in contact with someone with COVID-19 in your family, in your household. Yeah. Yeah, you will want to follow the policy there. And be honest with us. <laughs> Everyone's going to probably find out anyway. So be honest that this has happened and so forth so that we can deal with it. I think one of the hassles of the policy will be the possibility of having to stay home more. I'll be honest, with my own family. Um, both my wife and I will be at school all day, so yeah, uh, I'm in the same boat as some of you. How are we going to do that? So I understand. Um, nevertheless, um, we need to do what we can do to stay open. We need to do what we need to do to keep everyone as healthy as we can. 
and that's just period. Um, you know, it, it, it may happen that a Kieser kid, we did, every, we did all the precautions, and a Kieser kid shows up positive for COVID-19. I hope this doesn't happen, but let's just say it does. And even though we did everything possible, um, humanly speaking, <laughs> this, you know, this child now is exposed to other kids in the school. Um, but my, uh, my part of this agreement is we're going to do the best we can. And I guess what I'm asking you is you do the best you can, too. Do, do the best you can. All right. Um, I'm kind of running out of my uh, time here. So uh, one of the other things that I think that there might be some questions about, or at least I want to explain again, is that uh, the face coverings. And I, I, I know that there, as even as we work through this with our volunteers, people have a wide variety of thoughts and opinions about face coverings. There are those who, um, you know, prefer, probably prefer me to be in a face covering right now and feel uncomfortable and maybe that I'm pushing the limit by not wearing one now. Uh, to there are those who may feel that face coverings uh, are more harmful because we've, we've heard those kinds of reports in the news media and they may even be more detrimental than COVID-19. I understand. I've been listening to the same media that you've been listening to. Um, in order for us to do business, so to speak, and to deliver a classical Lutheran education this year, we have had to find this, this ground to stand on. Um, we, can, we can be open in person, um, but um, even recently, uh, Attorney General uh, came out with a statement saying, in, in response to Stephenville uh, City, who said, um, well, can't we still close down the schools? Can't the, can't the county health department close down the schools? And yeah, there is a means by which Collin County could close down our school if we had what they determined to be an outbreak on our campus for a short period of time. So it isn't that we get to exercise every right under the sun. Uh, there is a possibility that that, that that could happen as well. And I guarantee you, one of the questions that's going to be asked is, what are your mitigation protocols? And when the news shows up, they're going to want to know that. And any little uh, thing that we haven't been following or haven't been uh, in our own policy here, uh, someone is going to find a way to make us look pretty silly on the news, uh, especially when the local public school is closed. And, and so not only for your safety, but also just so that we can keep things functioning around here, we have to agree to follow these as, as best we can. And so we basically adopted from the current language from the Texas governor, the current uh, face covering policy. So uh, while on school premises, face coverings will be worn over the nose and mouth whenever it is not feasible to maintain six feet of social distancing. So what I am doing tonight, and I, I did this to kind of show you, that as long as I'm maintaining six feet of social distancing and I can be fairly certain that we'll be able to do that, um, and everyone's sitting there, and I'm up here, and I can be, unless you come up and all come up here and give me a big hug or something, I can be fairly certain that, that I can maintain six feet of social distancing. So. Uh, in that case, and even in our students' case, when they're at their desks, for instance, we are trying to spread students out so they will not have to wear, it's optional for them. It's optional for them to wear a mask. Um, but uh, when out in the hallways um, and so forth, there will be need then to, you can't guarantee walking down a hallway that you're going to be able to maintain social distancing. and so. Uh, or bathroom and that kind of thing, we'll be asking students to wear a face covering. Um, we are also, uh, the children in preschool through grade four, as we have some preschoolers here tonight, it is optional for them at all times, even while we will be trying to maintain social distancing for those students, but it remains optional for them throughout the day. That also 
Some people don't think the governor is strict enough. Some people think that he's too strict, but we're simply uh, following that basic guideline. Um, we are also have an exemption as optional for those that have a medical condition, uh, a medical condition or disability that may prevent wearing a, a facial covering. And so um, we, we have followed the governor's advice there. Of course, at lunchtime, we are planned to socially distance, but also um, uh, today I was at Verizon because I, I fell and in the process of falling, I busted my phone. But I think it kept me from, from hurting a rib right here, because I wear my phone right here. <clears throat> has nothing to do with being 50, okay? <laughs> but I, I fell and I, uh, my, my phone, but anyway, he, uh, we were both wearing a mask while in Verizon and he offered me a, b waddle, a water bottle. <laughs> so I was trying to drink it underneath my mask and I finally said, since I'm sitting over here and you're sitting over there, is it okay that I lift up my mask enough to drink my water? He said, sure, because uh, there, uh, uh, there was a sign that said that, that you will wear a face mask. So I thought, am I exempt if I try to drink the water you just offered me? Uh, so uh, yes, when you're eating and drinking, we'll try to socially distance. And also um, when you're outside and maintaining social distancing, uh, you won't, uh, th these, will be, uh, these will be optional. Also, um, we will be practicing social distancing here in the sanctuary. And so we will be spacing uh, students out in the pews for, uh, for our chapel time. When you're in the pew, um, face coverings will be optional at those times. If you wish to sing and participate in worship without one, you, you may. So um, the, there's a lot of other things I'm sure we could talk about, but uh, before we break, anybody have any basic questions about that? Yes. Um, so I noticed today because I was asked to pray Monday, and I looked on the schedule, and they're not moving. So are the kids staying in my classes the whole entire time? That's a good question. Uh, in case you didn't hear it, the question was: Are are the students staying in one classroom? We are trying to keep students in the same classroom as much as possible. Um, will there be um, sometimes? where the students won't be in that classroom? Probably. I mean, lunch times, for instance. Recess is another one. Uh, band, band may be another. So there will be times where you won't be in the classroom. But one thing that we will, won't do is that we won't have students rotating um, every bell. But rather, this year, we're going to ask the, the teachers to move. We are meeting for lunch outside of the classrooms, yes. Um, how will that work for locker room, lockers and storage of books? Um, I, I think we're still trying to find an answer to that, uh, or do we have an answer? Mrs. Ingram's looking at me. Okay, books and supplies will stay in the classroom. Thank you, Mrs. Ingram. <laughs> Try to keep... Stuff that you can bring to school, keep in there all day. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Woohoo. Yes, ma'am. I'm assuming, I'm sure you guys have this worked out, but for middle school and science class, right? We have labs that you may not want to spread out every desk. Right. Um, I can't give a whole section or chemical. Science lab. Science lab. Yes. So So uh, Miss Roundy, uh, when she's not having a lab, um, will be in the student's classroom. And they will only go to the lab on, on, uh, on the lab day. Okay. Seventh grade probably would not be in the science lab. That's the science lab. Yeah, the seventh grade will be uh, in Mrs. Mildred's room last year that'll be the uh, seventh grade homeroom where, where they will be the eighth grade homeroom will be where it has been uh, 
and the uh, sixth grade homeroom will be where it has been, Mrs. Ingram's class. And Mr. Merritt also has a plan for all of his high schoolers. And go to the high school uh, meeting and he'll explain that to you. Uh, any, anybody else? All right. It's good to see all of you. I've missed you. Um, I think, oh, summertime's the time for the headmaster to get away from everybody. But I, I have missed you. I missed not seeing everybody at the end of last school year. And uh, it's good to, good to see everyone. Let's conclude our time together and then we'll uh, dismiss by praying together the Lord's Prayer. Will you join me in prayer? Our Father, who art heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Do we have any uh, preschoolers here for the preschool pre-K? Preschool pre-K? Preschool? We have two. Yay. So guess what? You get to be temperature zapped and uh, you get to go over into the school building and follow our... Uh, Follow Mrs. Holmes. We'll let you, let you all be dismissed first. <laughs> Mrs. Holmes readies for you. She's got both hands full. <laughs> all right. So uh, um, Mr. Kreitcho is actually running the live stream right now. Um, let me ask one other question before we dismiss. Uh, some of the things that you'll be sharing in the Narthex, what about our live stream folks? How will they be able to find out information? So we'll try to communicate via, via email. Um, if there's another way you need to meet or want to reach out to your homeroom teacher, some things that may be shared outside of uh, during, the, uh, during the break session here, our teachers will be reaching out to you with some of that information. Is that right? Okay. Okay, everyone. Um, <laughs> mask up. <laughs> All right, break. In the narthex, any of the teachers that you'd like to meet with, make your way through there. Thank you for coming.